Hello, in this video, let's figure out why MR equals zero maximizes total revenue. I've got a couple examples here. Uh, these are on top two different inverse demand functions. On the bottom, these are two regular demand functions. They are, in fact, the same function, just rearranged. Uh, pretty, pretty traditional stuff. So we're starting out with uh, this question or this, uh, I guess, statement. When MR is zero, total revenue is maximized. So we want to know like, why does that happen? Okay, so let's get marginal revenue is zero, find the quantity, and then we'll plug that into our total revenue function, see what happens, and we'll change it slightly and see if we've still, um, if we still have, are making the most total revenue. So I've got uh, this one right here. And when I want to get total revenue, I need to multiply price times quantity. So in that case, total revenue, I'm just going to take that top function right there. It would be 40Q minus uh, 0.5Q. And I'm just going to cheat right here and put it squared right there. Okay, so this is the total revenue function. The marginal revenue function, just do that right underneath here. Marginal revenue, partial derivative of this. There's other videos on that that prove that, so we don't need to spend too much time with that. So then it would be uh, just 40Q. Okay, so let's take uh, marginal revenue is zero. So if we say marginal revenue is zero and then solve for Q, uh, we get Q is 40. So for this demand function over here, um, in this market, we've got uh, quantity 40 will give us the, to to ah, the highest total revenue when we produce 40 units. So let's see what that total revenue would be. So we're just going to plug that back into our total revenue function. This would be 40 times 40 minus one half 40 squared. Okay. And make sure I don't make a mistake. Let's get out the calculator here. So 40 times 40 is 1600. That part's pretty easy. Uh, and then over here is 1600. So that's, that's half of that. Uh, so 800. So 1600 minus 800 would be total revenue is 800. Okay. So basically we just want to see if we can beat that. And if we can then we didn't maximize revenue but if we can't then we we did so let's put um marginal revenue is 10. okay marginal revenue is 10 and then we'll see what the quantity is so we're going to plug that back into here so this would be 10 minus uh, sorry 10 equals we're just plugging into this function right here uh, 40 minus q and then q equals 30. So when marginal revenue is 10, quantity is 30. Let's see what that total revenue brings us. So it's, th whoops, it's 30. So now we're plugging it into this function. 30, or rather 40 times 30. I'll give myself some more room here. And then minus one half 30 squared so 30 so this right here is 120 uh, rather it's 1200 sorry it's 1200 right here and then we're going to subtract um, from this and so we would get uh, so 900 it would be 450 make sure I make sure I did that right so 30 times 30 times 0.5 is 450. So 1200 minus 450 is 750, which is a lower total revenue number than I got over here. Let's do a negative uh, marginal revenue. Let's just plug it back into the same numbers here. Let's say, let's just say it was negative one, so really close to zero. 
but a negative number. So negative one, and we're gonna plug that into here. Negative one equals 40 minus Q. So that'd be Q equals 41. And then now we're gonna plug that into our total revenue function. So what is the total revenue when we're producing 41 units? So 41 minus one half. Uh, 41 squared. We definitely need a calculator on this number. So 40 times 41 is 1640. 1641 rather. Nope, 1640. Just 1640. And then minus 41 times 41 times 0 0.5, so that's 840 and a half. So we'll make that number negative, and we'll add that to 1640. And we get uh, total revenue of uh, really close, 799.5, 799.5. However, uh, 800 is still more. So when we plugged in zero, we proved it there. Okay, so let's do this other curve just to make sure it works in, the, in a different setting. So really quick here, we'll go total revenue, skip some steps here a little bit. So it'd be 120Q minus 4Q uh, squared. Okay, and then marginal revenue is 120 minus 8Q. So if we do MR is zero, just plug in a zero there, we get 120 minus 8Q. And then 8Q equals 120. Q equals 20 divided by eight, which is 15. So revenue maximizing quantity is 15. Let's plug that into here and see what we get. 120 times 15 minus 4 times 15 squared. So we're going to get 120 times 15, 1800. And then 15 times 15 times 4 is 900. And so we got, let me just make sure I remember the right number here. So 1800 minus, minus 900 is 900. Okay, so that's the most we can get. We can test it out though. Let's do uh, MR equals 1. And we're just going to plug it in there. So we get uh, 1 equals 120 minus 8Q. And we get 8Q is 119Q would then be 14.875. 14.875. Okay, now I'm going to just call on my spreadsheet friend here to make the math a little quicker and plug in the total revenue function so total revenue equals so it would be 120 times we'll say whatever this is minus four times this Squared. Okay, and so far I put in zero, so we'll put 14.875. We get $899.93, which is not quite there. Now, the cool thing about this is I can actually put in uh, any number that I want. So before we had uh, 
Quantity 15, so what if we do a little bit more? Quantity 16 gives us 896, that's a little bit more. Let's say quantity 10, that gives us only 800. So that's that, those are two proofs uh, proving this. You can plug in a different function and just solve it, use those steps uh, and see if it works, but that's why it works. And those are a couple of proofs on total revenue being maximized when marginal revenue is zero.